All right, year 12. Um, so keeping going on with our finding a CDF, our cumulative uh, distribution function, a CDF. Remember, a CDF is summing up or adding all the areas under the curve from one point all the way down from the high, from some, uh, some given point all the way down to the lowest boundary that we have. But what happens if the function that we are given isn't a straightforward function? What happens if that function was a piecewise function? Um, so what we're going to do is quickly run through an example from the workbook that goes through that. It is a bit of an out there, a stretch of what we could ask you, but it's well inside the scope of what we could ask you. Uh, it's really gonna push your understanding of what's going on here. So we're gonna discuss this, um, this idea along with, and, and work our way through worked example 11 as we go through that. So to start off with, let's say we have some kind of piecewise function. Here you can see I've quickly just sketched something and, and what we have here is we have a straight line up until some point and after that point you can see it kind of starts behaving a quadratic. Now these aren't exact values, don't quote them for being exact values, but that's just kind of an example. Our lowercase f, our probability density function can be described as, well, x minus 5, a linear equation for values between 0 and 5. For values from five to seven, it's described as some kind of quadratic, um, shifted up a little bit, and anywhere else, it's zero. So what we have here is we have two different functions, and it's important to notice a few features. And, and one thing I would like to highlight straight away is, you know, that point there, at that x value there, that's where we have a change between our functions. We have one function and then becomes another function. All right, I'm gonna call that our boundary. That's our boundary value. That's where we shift from using our linear function to our quadratic function. And that has an impact. Remember our CDF, our, our CDF, the whole idea of our CDF was to add together all the areas. So if I'm only dealing with the linear function, well, that's okay. I can sum up all the areas, you know, to the left of it. But what happens if, I'll do this in a different color, let's pull out green, what happens if that's my value there that I wanna find the area of? Well, you know, to find its area, and I've just realized I've drawn a really dodgy function, but that's okay. To find its area, I need to calculate it. some small section underneath that, 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 that quadratic curve. I need to have some small section plus everything else that happened in that first one. I've got to have some part of this plus everything that happens there. And, and thinking about that, that's going to help us define what happens with our our CDF from this boundary point, let's call it point C. All right. So if we come over here, if a CDF sums up the area under a curve, then our cumulative distribution function is equal to the area up into and including our boundary plus the area from our boundary up until whatever maximum point that we have. And we can split a CDF that was one big integral into two sub-integrals, integrating two separate parts and combining their results to give us the different values that we need. And we're going to look at that through an example. So worked example 11. So here's worked example 11. Worked example 11 starts off and says a probability density function is defined by, notice, the notation lower f of x, k of five plus x for values of x between minus three and zero, k outside of five minus x for values between zero and three and zero elsewhere. One thing that we notice, we have two different functions that describe two different parts of this overall probability density function. So that means this is where this example comes in. We're gonna have two areas that we need to kind of calculate. And if we have a look, what we can identify here is that zero, that's our boundary. That's our point where we shift from one function 
to the next function. So we've got to take that on board. The first part of this example here, it asks you to find the value of k. So let's go through and do that. How are we going to do that? Well, this is a PDF, a probability density function. Because it's a PDF, what we have is we know that when we sum up all these areas, all this, when we integrate all this between minus 3 and 3, all of it, we know that our area is going to equal to 1. So what we know is that the integral between minus 3 and, whoops, and 3 of f of x with respect to x, it needs to equal to 1 because in the question it's defined as a probability density function. So we need to go through and we need to evaluate and solve that. So if we want to integrate this function between minus 3 and 3, what we're doing is we've got two areas here. We need to do integrate this one and add it together with the integral of this one and figure out when, for when does that equal 1. So what we know is that 1 is going to be equal to the integral between 0 and minus 3 of k outside of 5 plus x with respect to x plus the integral between, nope that's the wrong way around, sorry guys, minus 3 and 0, 0 and 3 of k outside of 5 minus x with respect to x. When we evaluate those two, uh, we will get a value of when does k, when, when that would equal to 1. So if we go through that right now, and we know, and I'm going to kind of skip a step here, but that's okay. We know that k, that's our constant. So I can take k out the front of those integrals. The, so if k comes out the front here, integrating 5 plus x, well 5, it gets an x, so that becomes 5x. x, x becomes x squared over 2. So what I know is then 1 is equal to k outside of 5x plus x squared squared on 2 between 0 and minus 3 plus k outside of 5x minus x squared over 2 between so what we are left with, like we're saying, was 5x plus x squared over 2. Evaluate that between 0 and negative 3. And then we've got to add the integral of the other side. Well, it's the same thing with it, just a change in sign. So 5x minus x squared on 2 between 3 and 0. When we evaluate that, what we get is 1 equals to 21k. So therefore k is equal to 1 on 21. All right, so we've got that, we've found the value of k. Let's take that up, let's take that on, and let's now go through, now that we know the value of k, go through and calculate the CDF for this function. So the CDF, well that is going to be f of x is going to be the integral of this and this. So we're going to have the integral between of 1 on 21 outside of 5 plus x with respect to x and that's going to be between minus 3 and 0. And what we're going to do is we're going to need to add that with the integral between 0 and t, our value t, that one that we want to substitute. Because remember, the CDF is a function. It's going to tell us where we're going to end up between of 1 on 21, our sort of 5 minus x dx with respect to x. So let's go through and let's evaluate that. I'm going to evaluate them one at a time. I'm going to evaluate this one first. Then I'm going to evaluate this one. And we're going to come back then at the end and put them all together to get our CDF. So just starting off with the integral of minus 3 and 0 of 1 on 21, 5 plus x dx. 
Well, that is going to be one on 21. Take that out the front of, we already know what five plus X integrates to. That is five X plus X squared over two. And I want to evaluate that between minus three actually. And what I want to do here with this one, sorry, I'm gonna evaluate this one with respect to t. Evaluating or not, evaluating this as a function because on what happens if with our CDF, what happens if the, that, that area, that value we wanted to find because we're finding a function is just only in that, that first part of our piecewise function. So I, I need a statement that just tells me how to do something just in that first part of my piecewise function. All right, so this just becomes one on 21 outside of, well, five T plus T squared over two, put a big bracket, minus um, five lots of minus three plus minus three squared over two. Now evaluating that one, and when we go through and evaluate that one, um, what we are going to be left with is that's gonna become one on 21 outside of five T plus T squared over two plus 21 over two. All right, so our CDF, we started, is starting to take shape. For our first little area, for the first area under the curve, this is the expression, the equation that's going to give us our area up until any, from any point, just in that first section. Um, so that's, let's call that F of X, um, which is gonna equal one on 21 of five X plus X squared over two plus 21 on two. And that is f of x for values of x that from minus three, from minus three to zero. That's the equation how to find the area. All right, I'm gonna leave that one there. I am gonna come back and talk about that one in a sec.